Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from all across Canada. Over the course of this episode, we will be learning about who our guest is, what drives them, and how they are working to make their community a better place for everyone who lives there. Now, we are honored today to welcome to the show from the town of Renfrew, Ontario, Mayor Tom Sidney. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. So, Tom, uh, I want to start with the big question that I start all my interviews off with local elected leaders, so you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? Uh, it goes back to being a child with my uh, my grandparents. My grandparents were very uh, philanthropic and, and very heavily involved in the community in Renfrew, and um, it's just something that I've always um, done. It, uh, it's something I've always believed in, and even through, um, you know, Elementary school, high school, um, college, it was just something the community has always been an important piece. And, and my my career, I worked uh, almost 30 years in mental health and wellness. So um, I'm all about people. I can imagine being all about people. You wouldn't have never have imagined being the mayor of your community at any time during your childhood or during your high school years. So what made you get involved in the political realm, particularly at the municipal level? Um, well, I think it goes back to, again, believing in, in your community. And I, I did two terms as council. Um, so I've been on council since 2014. Um, I, it's something that I just felt that uh, Renfrew is a very unique town and it has its uh, its great advantages and, and great things. And then it has some hurdles. And I think one of the things that uh, Renfrew is famous for is being stuck in the old ways. Um, and I think it was, uh, I'm, I'm a forward thinker and... Uh, my campaign speech for mayor was changes are coming. Um, you know, so I think it was just something about getting involved and helping to bring red fruit into the 20, 20th century and, and start to, and start to get this town where it should be. So what was happening in 2014 for yourself? Because I'm assuming there was one day that you said, okay, let's do it. Let's put my name on the ballot municipally to start making some of those changes that I want to see in our community and bringing it into, and I'm quoting you here, the 20th century. What was happening in 2014 that finally made Tom say, okay, it's time to put up or shut up? Actually, I was going to do it in 20, uh, 2010, but my employer, um, we had contracts where you couldn't be in um, municipal government. So I had to wait the four years, and then it turned out that I was able to do it at that point. Um, I, I think it was just, it was the time where I was uh, I was at a good point in my life. Um, I had moved away. I lived away from uh, Renfrew for a number of years and came back. Um, and it was just, you know, my kids were, were older and it was just somewhere that uh, it was a time in my life where I could I could give the time that uh, I believe that uh, you need to give to make this work. I'm assuming you had known what the issues and the sort of the challenges the town had was facing in 2014 and even up to today because you don't get reelected and then elected mayor if you don't know the challenges that your community is facing. Um, in 2014, was there a particular issue that you looked at and you said, I, if I get one thing accomplished in a, uh, my term, even if it's just for one term, I hope it's X? Nothing really specific. Um, okay. It ended up developing into something that uh, is pretty close to me that's caused a lot of uh, a lot of controversy, but it's going to be a positive at the end of it. But uh, I think it was more, you know, let's be transparent and, uh, you know, show that council is approachable and, and we're open to hearing from the community and listening. How do you see yourself in the role as mayor of balancing the needs of the individual with the needs of the many? Because you're there to represent the town as a whole, but you can't forget about the people who've elected you. How do you balance what your community wants and needs with the individual wants and needs of your community? Uh, I would say that was probably an anticipated question. That's probably going to be the most difficult to answer. <laughs> um, just because being... Working in the, the mental health world and, and working with people my entire life and uh, my entire career was pretty much an all in non for profit. Um, so I'm grassroots, um, believing in people, and I've done motivational speaking and all of that stuff. So the part that I find really difficult playing the mayor hat versus my sort of experience is um, trying to make everybody happy, um, <laughs> which is zero possibilities when you're in this role. 
but uh, you know, I think it. I, I take this role very seriously, and it does. Um, you know, I'm still trying to get used to uh, you know all the negative comments on social media sometimes, and um, you know, it, it's with social media and, and being in the municipal government. Uh, it. Uh, I joke that you you know you find out how much you don't know or how uneducated you are once you become in this role because everybody will tell you on social media that you don't know what you're talking about, um, and there's a lot of those armchair quarterbacks that uh, we deal with and I think that's my my hard part is because I do kind of wear my heart on my sleeve and that's why I said earlier before we started that I'm not a politician um you know I'm 48 years old I'm covered in tattoos I got earrings I'm six foot three bald head I look like a biker um I'm not your typical rent from air and and I think that's a good thing for right now for where we're transitioning does it weigh on you does it weigh on you the responsibility that you have as mayor to make sure that the decisions you make make the least amount of financial impact on your residents, but knowing that if you don't do things, your community is going to be stuck in the past. Uh, yeah, it, uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I think I'm, I'm, I'm a straight shooter. So, you know, there are some sleepless nights for sure. Um, you know, we, we have a very large capital project that's been kind of working on for the last probably six and a half years that it's finally coming to fruition the unfortunate part is it was a, a very large capital construction build that got hit with covid um so we're obviously over budget now and people are upset and you know there's those things there and it was kind of my driving that was the one thing i said that became kind of my passion was to uh, to expand our recreation services because Renfrew is unique in what it has for tourism what it doesn't have so our recreation facilities are top-notch and that was something we wanted to do, but now we're over budget and, you know, so we're dealing with that and delays. And stuff. So. We're going to talk about uh, tourism in a few minutes here, but I want to stick on this, this issue because um, you, you are the mayor of your community and you have to make the best decision, but you're not alone in those decisions as well as the mayor, you and your council members have to look at all information that is provided to you. How much weight and responsibility do you put on yourself every time you get that council agenda package to make sure you're informed on what decisions you're making, but also talk to the people of Renfrew, talk to the community members and say, what's your thoughts on this? Because I can imagine you, some people, and I've talked to a few who make decisions based on what they believe is best, but others may make decisions on what they hear from their communities. What type of mayor are you? Are you one of those shoot from the hip? Or are you one of those engaging mayors who hope that they can get a consensus from their population? Um, I think, you know, for and this is a unique council because uh, we have one council. So there's five councillors, a Reeve and a mayor. Um, we're very fortunate enough that uh, Reeve Peter Emo is also the county of Redford Warden um, and has been previously. He's also the chair of the Eastern Ontario Wardens Caucus and sits on AMO and Roma. So we're very fortunate to have him. He's got about 30 years experience in municipal wow. governance. Um, so that's that's a shining star there. Um, we have another councillor that got elected that was on council a number of years ago. And the other four are brand new. Um, so and younger, which is good. Um, but it's a learning curve for everybody, right? It's a learning curve for me as mayor. Um, we've done a big transition period. Um, with Renfrew, we used to operate as a senior management team, which was the five department heads basically ran the, ran the town. Um, and now we have a CAO model. So that's new. Um, this is the first council or first term of council where actually council members have a computer. Um, and all of our, our agendas used to be printed and paper. So things like that. But when it comes to the people, it's, you know, it's making sure that we have really good committees and, and the structure of that's good. So we're very well educated. Um, the week before a council meeting, we have the committee meeting. So we know what's coming um, and we, we trust our staff. We have great staff, but again, at the end of the day, you, you know, you hear the roads are bad and you know, you hear, we got to fix the potholes and, and you know, why are we getting a second nice pad and not a pool, you know, things like that. And, and I think it's uh it's to try and work with the community at the same time, educate the community. And I don't think people realize that how much a municipality's hands are tied when you're, we're a lower tier. So we have the County and then we have the province. Right. Um, and I don't think people realize how tightly your hands are tied with some of the decisions that, you know, 
even water, like water has to pay for itself. So water in, water out. You can't use taxation to pay for water. Um, our river that we have is not the greatest. So in order to make the water clean, it costs a lot of money. Um, but the province says you must follow these rules or you can go to jail. You know, so these are the things we try to help the community understand that we're, we're doing the best and trying to educate. Um, so I'm you've, you, you, you've like, brought up a good segment here and I apologize for interrupting because no you, you, you have just touched on something that I talk about more often than I thought I would. The, do, the roles and responsibilities of the jurisdictions that the local government, provincial government, federal government, or even the county governments deal with. Does the average resident know the what is what falls under the umbrella of the jurisdiction of the town of Renfrew? And would you say your job is dealing with more uh, other levels of government's jurisdictions more than the towns when it comes to what residents want or need? I don't I don't think the residents some do. I think they, they know, but I think the, for the majority, they don't know. Um, and that's part of, um, you know, I'm trying to build a, a social media presence so that we can be transparent and in real time. Um, you know, I'm actually, uh, we hired a communications um, coordinator, so I'm actually going to do my own podcast um, that we want to be able to do um, just to talk about what's happening in Renfrew and, and be that real time um, piece. But, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to follow the rules and, you know, it's, trying to listen to the people and understand that, yes, I know, and I keep using the roads because the roads in Renfrew are bad. Um, but, you know, you need the government grant in order to do the road. Um, you know, we've been very successful. I think we're going on number eight or number nine through connecting links funding um, because we have one of the largest connecting links from, you know, provincial highway to, to municipal. Um, so we're finishing that up. But we can't do the work without the grants because, you know, like I said, we're 8,500 people. So if you want your taxes to go through the roof, which nobody does, you, you can only work with what you have. So, you know, we rely heavily on the province um, and the federal government. Um, that's the only reason we are doing the uh, the expansion at our, our activity center, because we did get federal and provincial money. So we're very appreciative of that. Um, but it does take a, a good networking between the municipality, the province, the federal government, um, working together and then to educate the people that, you know, yes, I know you'd like that, but the impact that's going to have on everybody. Um, and and I'll, I'll use the pool as an example. It, uh, there's been a debate for 50 plus years in Renfrew. There's been fundraising for a pool. There is no feasibility possibility that 8,500 people can afford to pay for a pool. Um, and yes, we do have that 28 to 30,000 surrounding population that use our services, but it doesn't affect their tax. So you know, you, you just can't do it. And, and trying to get people to realize that and for the select people that want a pool, I get it. But, you know, those are the decisions that you have to make to, that, that people don't like. But, uh, you know, there are some decisions that aren't fun. Is it is it is it part of your job to ensure that the people the people of your community are informed but also understand the correct information that is going out. Because I'm assuming I, I see you on social media and I, I follow you on Twitter. I'm not sure if you're on Facebook, but I will be following you after this if you are. Um, you know, yeah, and I, know. Facebook, I, don't Twitter. I don't understand Pardon? it yet. <laughs> Um, I'm, you, I'm learning the Twitter thing. You and I both understand that there is misinformation and falsehoods out there when it comes to information around government and what the duties and responsibilities or even where the money is going. How much of a responsibility do you put on yourself to make sure that people are informed, educated, but also that the misinformation that's out there is challenged and say, no, that's not what it is. It's actually X, Y, and Z, not A, B, and C, like you're saying. Yeah, I think that's that's paramount. I think that's that's one of the biggest things that that uh, I know as as sitting in the mayor chair that that I would like to improve on, and, and we are. Um, but yeah, there's the you know I call them the armchair politicians that like to they're very very confident when they're behind their screen, but when you see them in public, they put their head down and walk past. Um, you know, and and people just like to throw stuff out there, and I think there are people out there social media that just actually like causing a disturbance um and stirring the say pot. it's not so tom say it's not <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> there's a few of them there's a few of them uh but again it's that education piece right it, it's 
you know, okay, yes, you may have some facts, right? But I'm just going to put a comment down here explaining exactly what is happening. Um, and I think that's important. I think people appreciate it. Um, I, you know, I'm receiving positive feedback from being connected in the, the social media realm that people are like, you know, we're hearing what's going on. And, um, you know, it's trying to increase that that base as well. And um, I think it, it comes down to just being honest and listening to people. And, and at the end of the day, and I say to my wife all the time, especially on those frustrating days, I'm like, the hard part about it is sometimes you get right through the coals, but I actually do care about this community. Like this, this is not a, this is not a check the box to say, Hey, look at that. I got, I got to be mayor and I got my picture on the wall. That has nothing to do with it. I, I'm the first one to say, do not call me your worship. I'm the first one to say, you know, staff tease me all the time, Mr. Mayor, and it drives me nuts. Um, you know, those are things I'm, I'm Tom and, and we're just, we're here to work together and, um, it's a team and, and, you know, between the great staff, great council, um, try to move this town forward. Uh, last question before we move to the town as a whole here. Um, the personal and public life of a uh, municipal leader, particularly the mayor, and I was going to say politician, I caught myself there because I know that you don't <laughs> like that, um, can, can weigh on you because unlike federal or provincial politicians, you're not in Ottawa, you're not in Toronto doing your job. You literally go to the grocery store like everyone else does in your community. And particularly in smaller communities like Renfrew of 8,500 people, people know who you are. I'm assuming there's days that you just want to be Tom, but there's days that you have to go to events and you have to go to the grocery store to grab groceries and people will stop you. And I'm assuming because I've spoken to many, pol uh, many municipal leaders uh spouses can take a, a toll on that because they just want to go out with their husband or wife and go do grocery shopping have you found that balance of the personal life of a mayor and the private life of a mayor getting there um i, I think it's <laughs> it's it's a unique situation i think for me personally um i come from a very well-known family and in my career i've been very well known in the media world and and things like that so people already knew who i was um and know who i am i'm very fortunate enough that uh you know the my rock and and my strength and in, in my wife um but she worked in the community for 20 years so i think she knows more people than i do so she gets stopped more than i do so it, it, there's a balance there um but for the most part uh, people are people are pretty good um but again, at the end of the day, you you're a mayor and, and, you know, we're trying to get council to understand as well that you're on you're working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Even um, if you're not getting paid a, that way. <laughs> that's right. Um, you know, and, and, you know, we have an integrity commissioner that, you know, you have to you have to toe the line. And, and even when you're not doing, you know, something for municipalities, you're out at a, a friend's birthday party or, you know, you're at a wedding reception you're still a mayor and you're still a counselor and people are watching and, you know, and that's, that's the hard part. I think that you just sometimes wish you could be just you and have fun and, you know, cut loose. And, but, you know, at the end of the day, you represent everybody in the municipality and we're here to do what's best for everybody. And that's the other part of being in this role is that, you know, you make decisions that's best for the municipality, not best for Tom. Um, so, you know, you got to watch that passion piece. So I want to turn to the municipality, the town of Renfrew as a whole right now, and I want to get your personal opinion, not council's opinion, but your opinion. I'm assuming they're the same, but I want to ask you directly, in your opinion, Tom, what is the biggest issue facing the town of Renfrew as of recording this episode? I think it comes down to money. Um, <laughs> you know, that that's really what it is, right? It's It's trying to... Like I said, Renfrew, Renfrew has been stagnant for a number of years, and, and there's a lot of pickup that we've done over the last eight um, and catch up. Um, our roads are bad, as, as I said, but we also have like 120 year old infrastructure still. Um, I mean, like we still have lead pipes in the ground. So, you know, to do a shave and pave on a road, well, what happens if next year we have to replace the water main? We just wasted the money because we're going to have to dig it up anyway. So, we're waiting to do the full reconstruction then you need the grant. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's, I think that's Renfrew's biggest um, hurdle is, is that, you know, we, we do have some low income um, families that are probably higher than others. 
Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, those things, but Renfrew is really trying and, and is becoming this um, new, unique, um, inclusive, welcoming community. Um, and I think for a number of years, it was known as a hockey town. And, you know, the hockey players were the gods and, and that's just how it worked. And now we're seeing a lot more uh, multicultural. We're seeing a lot more diversity in, in sports, um, you know, and, and stuff like that. So I think Renfrew's hurdles are, I'll, I'll be honest, and, and this, is, this is one that I don't want you to cut. Renfrew's biggest problem, to be honest with you, is they hate change. Renfrew does not like change. I worked for a municipality that we often joked at as administration that the 1980s happened and then they stopped and it was in 2020, 2015. So I, I understand where you're coming from on that. Change is hard for people, but change is needed though, right? Absolutely. And, and you know, like even right now we're doing, uh, we're doing renovations to our, our municipal hall, like our town hall. And it's not cheap, um, but the building, part of the building was built in 75 the other part was built in 84 i think nothing's been done and we're a municipal we're a municipal building that doesn't even have an accessible washroom so we're breaking the rule <laughs> like we have to be accessible so we've got to do these things so that's what i mean by you know that forward thinking it was just more of a reactionary community as a proactive community and i think now we're at the point to let's be proactive and let's look what's coming and you know, we do know the four lanes are going to be a tremendous help to Renfrew um, with growth. So what we've done is we put a mayor's task force together um, to address that. And there's uh, three, myself and two members of council, um, senior staff. And then we've chosen seven community business and industry leaders in the community that are coming together to say, OK, what does Renfrew need? How do we prepare for this? We are going to have growth. Um, one of the things Renfrew is very fortunate enough is that municipality itself owns almost 300 acres of land so we can strategically place you know do we want industry growth over here do we want commercial or residential over here how do we do it um and learn from other municipalities who weren't really prepared for it and then you know kind of get landlocked because they built so many houses so quickly um so we know that's potentially here and and coming so let's be ready for it I'm assuming you know NIMBYism is alive and well in this country, and it sounds like, and I'm not trying to be rude, but it sounds like there might be some NIMBYism that not in my backyards in Renfrew when you talk about change. How do you as mayor and council address the needs of your community to grow it while trying to ensure that the people who don't want the drastic changes that you may want feel comfortable with what's going on in your community? Well, I think it comes down to communication and transparency, right? Don't just say, you know, boom, this is happening right now and, and it's done and that's the end of the discussion. Um, I think it, it's it's getting people to realize that, that growth is going to happen and this is what we need to do, that we think we need to do in order to be ready for that um, and, and listen to the people and, and understand that, um, you know, some people do not like change, um, but at the end of the day, it's coming. So let's work together um, and, and try to get people on the same page of acceptance and, and all of that stuff. Because if we don't, then Renfrew stays stagnant again. And, and again, it comes down to taxpayer dollars that fixes the road. So, you know, we need growth and we need more businesses and we do need things like that. We have one of the most beautiful historical downtowns that's thriving in Ontario. Um, so let's let's keep it that way. And, and we're not just getting swallowed by box stores. Um, we do have a large, um, you know, small business um, capacity in Renfrew, and we want to keep that. So how do you see yourself as mayor in attracting that growth and attracting that new business to the downtown to to your community? Because uh, you're not the first person who's who's told me, the first municipal leader from across Canada who's told me that the issue with their community is growth and trying to make growth happen in 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 this sort of uh, inflationary uh, era that we're currently living in. So, how do you see yourself, and what steps, proactive steps, is the council and yourself doing to make sure that Renfrew is put on the map? First of all, we have fantastic staff. We've done a huge uh, staff shift in some new roles. and 
hired some great, great people and, and we were able to uh, do some great succession planning with staff that we have. Um, and, you know, I think we've, we've been able like things that, that have changed in the past that we haven't had before, for example, is we now have an economic development officer. Oh, we have a, a real estate coordinator. We have a communications um, and engagement coordinator. We have a special events and signature events coordinator. We didn't have those before. Um, so those are the things that are exciting where we have this economic development officer who's fantastic, um, who's looking at our lands and who's, it's not just about how do we bring, you know, that one night event downtown where people can shop and whatever. It's more of economic development in Renfrew needs a hotel. Renfrew needs more industry. Renfrew needs more business. Um, how do we, you know, work with the industries we have so they stay here? And I think that's setting us in, in the right direction of the engaging the community and, and having um, staff that are, are able to do that. And then council, by getting educated by staff and hearing it, hearing from the people, we make the best decision that we feel is best for for rent for moving forward. I want to turn to my last uh, subject matter here before I let you go here, Tom, and that's tourism. I love tourism. I've said to everyone who's come on the show, if you come on the show, I'm coming to your community to spend my economic dollars in your community. So later this summer, I'm going to be actually coming back to Ontario from Calgary. We're driving across, stopping in all the communities. Renfrew is now on the map. What should people do in the community of Renfrew? Uh, for tourists, what is there for people to see? What are, is there people to do to go grab a beer? What should people do as a tourist to your community? So, again, our, our historical downtown, um, our buildings are built in the 1800s. They're three stories. Like, you know, they're beautiful. Um, so just taking in our downtown as a whole is something that's exciting for people. Um, believe it or not, Renfrew has one of the three only swinging bridges in Canada. Um, so we have the Swinging Bridge. Um, we have a number of parks. Our, uh, our recreation facility out at Mattaway Activity Center is second to none. Um, we're in the middle of doing a $28 million um, expansion that's almost 80,000 square feet with a second ice pad, a brand new recreation facility, a full-size official gymnasium, um, a raised walking track, four program rooms, two fitness centers, um, and the cool thing about it is we have partnered with the um, Bonisher Algonquins um, Indigenous group. We have a multi, an Indigenous cultural center being attached to the building as well, um, which will be, as far as we know, the first of its kind where they can do actual indoor smudging with fire indoors off a reservation in Canada. Wow. So that, that's pretty exciting and, and we're looking forward to that. Um, there's all kinds of walking trails in Mattaway. Um, it's about 140 acres there. Um, you know, we have some signature events coming up. We have a really cool music festival that's happening in July 14th to 15th. Um, with some high, uh, high entertainers like Jason Blaine and um, he's coming. So, you know, I think that it's just Redford's an experience. And I think it's, it's, you know, we're looking at other things with, you know, we don't have a beach, unfortunately, because of our, our river, um, so, you know, what are, what do we have? What are we making attractive? We're going to be creating a new waterfront master plan where we're looking at all of the, um, you know, our, our Bonsha River and, and all of that stuff where we can beautify it and things like that. But um, right now, I would say Renfrew is an experience when you come as a destination and um, take it all in. And, and we're, uh, you know, we've got restaurants on the main street, patios, um, you know, ice cream shops, benches. Oh. You know. I'm looking forward to it. What do you do, though? What do you do in the community to decompress? After a long day of council, after a long day at work, uh, I can imagine like other municipal leaders from across Canada, you want to go home and sleep and just stay in your house so you can actually let loose, as you say. But in your community, is there a place that you can go and just let your worries wash away and just refocus who Tom is? Um, actually, it, it's it's at home with my wife. Um, and the reason I say that is because um, there's a joke out here that, that Renfrew is now the Hallmark movie um, capital, not because we have movies shot here, but the mayor actually owns an inn. Um, so my wife and I own a bed breakfast. So um, we put a lot of our focus there and, and our, uh, our yard is pretty, uh, 
pretty spectacular landscape and pool and stuff. So that's kind of what, what we do to decompress is just reconnect with being at home and, and trying to, you know, cater to a different type of person. Cause we have, uh, we have tourists from all over the world coming and stopping by. So. So I'm going to end with the million dollar question and you can take as long as you want to answer this or as short as time as you want to answer this. In your opinion, what makes the town of Renfrew such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? There's a number of things. I think, you know, one thing that, you know, is, is really important, um, obviously, to people is health care. Um, we have one of the best hospitals in Ontario. For a small community, it's second to none. Um, so I think that is that is really good for people that want to move here is that uh, our health care is really good. Um, and we are recruiting doctors um, regularly. Uh, I think it's it's a nice balanced community where, um, you know, I, I would say the uh, the best part for future growth and for people to understand is um, Renfrew is classified as probably one of the best communities for what's called secondary spousal income. So you live in Renfrew and you can, one spouse can work in Chalk River up at the nuclear plant or at uh, Garrison Petawawa. And one spouse can work in Ottawa and it's the exact same distance. So there's multiple opportunities for um, couples that both work to work in Ottawa and to work up in the upper part of, of the county. So um, that's something that we're really looking forward to people embracing. Um, we actually have a lot of military families that are moving to town because of the connection to Ottawa and Garris Petal. Um, so I think that, that part is, that part is good. And I, we have, we have the opportunity to grow with the lands we own and our infrastructure is good. Um, you know, it, it's something that uh, Renfrew is, is, proud of Renfrew and I think the people who live here are proud of their community um, and, and we are grateful to have some of that old school knowledge because you don't want to lose the historical past um, you know those are the things that are important and we're we're trying to bring some some life and some young family life back and our business improvement association is fantastic our chamber of commerce is really engaging um, you know so it's, it's about just you know letting people know that it's their community and we're here for them um, I'm not here for me. It, uh, it's, it's, it's ironic. <laughs> the funny thing is, is I get smashed on social media all the time because I'm spotlight Tom apparently, cause I like to be in the pictures and I like to be noticed. And I'm like, that's the last thing I really want. But, uh, um, you know, that's, that's why we're doing the podcast. We're going to flip that negative into a positive and spotlight ran through and, you know, explain what we're doing. But I just want people to be, you know, as proud of their community as I am of it. And I do know that there's work still to be done. And we need to listen to the people and, and have them engaged in the conversation. And at the end of the day, we know we're going to make decisions that aren't going to be taken, you know, well by some people and other people will embrace it. And that's where you have to be able to juggle the trying to make everybody happy, which if I can figure that out, I'm going to, I'm going to bottle it and sell it because that's just next to impossible. But, you know, every day you wake up and you try. And, and that's why we're here is to not only put Renfrew on the map and make it, make it the best town that, that I think it is, but also to make sure that people believe in it and, you know, trust that we are doing what we feel based on education and, and what we're told is doing the best um, decisions for the community. Um, you know, we were very fortunate this year with the staff that we have and, and the knowledge, you know, we have a, an $80 million budget with 50 million capital and the tax raised was only 2.5%. So, you know, it's pretty spectacular how they pulled that off. So, you know, I think it's it's just trusting that that we're doing things for the better of the community, and and it's because we believe in the people of of Renfrew, and and you know we want to we want to see it grow and and succeed. We have you know we have a junior A hockey team, and everything that's that's all we have. No, we now have competitive basketball team that uh, that's here, and you know things are are happening, and people are are. The, the the joke that we have, it's not a joke, but the state the statement we have internally here is, you know, people are starting to realize they better jump on the train soon or they're going to miss it um, because Renfrew is going to just explode in the next probably year and a half to two years. So, yeah, it's, it's a great town. 
it seems like it. And I'm looking forward to getting back to run for a little bit later on this summer, but I want to thank you. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart to actually sit down and take time out of your day to do this. It's greatly appreciated. And I say this with all sincerity, um, your community is better served with you at the council table in your position as mayor. You seem like someone who wants the best for the community. And it's always fascinating when I sit down and I chat with people who you can tell by their voice that they are doing it for the right reasons and they're not doing it for the glory. They're doing it for their community. So thank you for serving. Thank you. I appreciate that. And that's, uh, that's exactly how I feel. It's, it's not a me thing. Um, you know, council's a team. Um, we're not always going to agree, but at the end of the day, it's what's best for the community. And, and you know, my wife, you know, kind of an ending joke a bit, you know, people call her the first lady of Renfrew and she just about crawls under the table. Um, like she doesn't like that either. So, you know, being the jokey guy that I am, I actually got her a sweater made for Christmas. Um, <laughs> it, it has the four stars and all that stuff. So, you know, I think it's, it's, we want to have fun too, right? Renfrew's fun and we want to, we don't want to be that stuffy you know, we, we follow the rules and, and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, I want staff to be happy and, and engaged in what they're doing. And I want the community to be happy and see that we are working for them. And, um, you know, three and a half years from now, when an election comes again, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, for the most part, we, we plan for the future and, and work for today. And, um, you know, we'll just take the town to where it needs to go. I want to thank everyone for tuning in for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. We'll be back tomorrow with another one. Until then, just keep talking.